Okay, so if you remember last week, you got a LAMP stack installed on your Pi. That's awesome. So today we're going to concentrate on connecting our accelerometer, which you all did. Um, and this is how you, there's a card in there where you have to connect the 3.3 volt line to the 3.3 volt line from the accelerometer to the um, Raspberry Pi. And then there's an SDA line and an SCL line. I'm going to explain this in a minute. And then a ground. Okay, so all of these sensors have to be powered. So they need a, uh, they need a positive DC connection and a minus DC connection. And um, you have that on your GPIO connector on your Pi. So you all hooked it up. You either have one of these two sensors and those ribbon cables uh, could come in various colors. Uh, I tend to line up the one closest to red with the positive and the one closest on that ribbon cable to black with the negative, and then I use the other two for the data lines. Okay, so those other two are data lines. So I had you connect all these up and then plug it in. Uh, and then there's a couple of things. There are four connections, so a power ground, a clock connection, and a data connection. We're using what's called the I squared C bus. Okay, this allows you to connect multiple sensors in what's called a master slave configuration. Okay, and um, it uses a two byte address to reach sensors on the bus. So you can slave together multiple sensors. These particular um, uh, uh, accelerometers uh, I got from eBay for about three bucks that came from China. Uh, and they're pretty much the same sensor that's in your smartphone. If you've ever played games, you know, where you're rotating your phone around or playing like a pinball game or something like that, that's how that works. Also, if you look closely on the back, you will see these two little tiny pads, and it probably says like some jumper one, S jumper one or something like that. There are blank pads on there. If you put a solder connection between those two, it'll change the address. So you could actually have more than one of these, one without the jumper and one with the jumper, and you can daisy chain them together on this single I squared C bus. So this is a serial communication bus. And the way it works is there are two lines. There's a clock. So that clock is just going to be sending a square wave signal. And every time that clock goes from low to high or high to low, depending upon how it's configured, it, whatever's on the other data line is going to be considered a high or a low. So it's going to read those in in succession and string together a bunch of binary data. Make sense? And it does that pretty fast, okay? Like in microseconds. So uh, there's all these peripherals, like this is a peripheral sensor that is made to communicate on the I squared C bus, and then they have a hardware data sheet on how you set it up to do to take readings at certain ranges. Okay, so you're going to be able to like tilt this thing, and it's going to measure what axes you're in, okay? Which way is it tilted? Or is, is there vibration going on? So this is, this is the actual sensor that I use to detect if the dryer was running or not running, okay? All right. Um, logging data. Okay, so in order to be able to get data from the sensor, um, we're going to have to create a database for storing accelerometer data, all right? So I'll freely admit the, the road that I took on this was, was overly complicated, but it was more from the perspective of, hey, you could build a web server and you can take data from a sensor and log it to the database. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to set this up where we're storing a minute's worth of data in writing over the old data. Okay, we're going to store uh, every tenth of a second, we're going to store X, Y, and Z accelerometer data to a database. 
and we're going to store uh, a minute's worth of data, I think. So is that 600 pieces? Something like that. 600 pieces of data. Okay, because if you've got 60 seconds, right, and then every tenth of a second I'm storing X, Y, and Z data. So that's about 600. And then we're going we're gonna to basically write over the oldest. And so you'll always have, I think, the last minute's worth of data in the database. Sound good? Okay. So the database, we're going to call the database Accelerometer Data, and we're going to have a table called Accelerometer Data because I'm super uncreative. And um, this is going to store our time. We're going to store a timestamp, X, Y, and Z axis accelerometer data. So you're going to want to log into MySQL on the command line and create a user account called Accelerometer that will own a table called Accelerometer Data. Okay. Uh, so I don't remember how we set up our MySQL. I think you just say sudo MySQL minus U. You don't have to say the minus P. Uh, and I think we're good. You may have to say root. Let's see. And then you're going to type these commands. So first thing is log in, bring up a terminal window, and log into your Pi if you haven't already done so. And you suggested when we, when we actually created it, you suggested that we put it in there with the password of Pi 0W to keep them consistent. Yes, thank you. Thanks for, for that. Okay. And I forget what mine is called. I think it's something like apricot. Yeah, apricot. All right. So, and again, um, so a again, you have to be logging in on the PCs here, not your laptop. Remember. <laughs> okay, pi zero w. So we're logged in. I'm logged in. Uh, in fact. I could bring up a web browser and I could go, what, remember, pi zero, no, uh, apricot, that's it, apricot pi. So remember you got your web page up, right? So you should see this if you navigated via a web page to your pi. Super awesome, cool. Okay. I'm going to go find my window and I'm going to type my SQL minus U root. Nope. Let's try sudo my SQL minus U root. No, that doesn't work. sudo my SQL. Did I call it pi zero? Uh, the User? I'm pretty sure the user was root, and then you had to do the slash p. Oh, minus u root minus p and pi zero w. There we go. <laughs> All right. So I guess you do have to do that. And I had you set, thank you, uh, Joe, for reminding. I had you set the root password to um, pi zero w. Okay. So what do you got to do? You got to go over here. And say create. I have that PDF up there. You can pretty much just copy and paste this stuff. Okay, so we're going to create a user called Accelerometer, identified by the password Accelerometer. Okay, so we're good there. And then we're going to grant all privileges to a table that we're going to create. I'm sorry, a database that we're going to create called Accelerometer Data and all the tables, uh, which would be dot star, to Accelerometer. Okay, so we've got that. Grant all privileges. We're good. And then it's a good idea to flush the privileges. Okay, I'll leave that up there for a second. Did you put that PowerPoint somewhere? Yes. The, I put a PDF up in... Um, yeah. Yes. So you should be able to just follow along there, copy and paste that, that stuff. OK. 
Okay. And then you should be able to exit. We good to exit? Uh, hold on. Okay. Oh, we can. All right. Yeah, you can. All right. So now we've created a, a user. And then the next thing you want to do is log into, I believe we installed Adminner. So now you can log into Adminner using the username of Accelerometer and the password of Accelerometer. So if I go and bring up my, my web page right here, I'll just open another tab and I'll type in Adminner. So Adminner comes up. I need to change that to Accelerometer and the password for that is Accelerometer. If I log in, no, I don't want to save anything. I don't have any databases, but I can create a database. Okay. Um, I don't think we're going to need to create a database because I think I have you download an SQL file. Okay. So everybody with me so far? Oh, you do have to create the database, but you're going to you're going to load up the table. Okay. So then. Yeah. So the first thing you need to do is create a database, call it accelerometer data and then save that the database. All right. All right. So create database, call it accelerometer data, press save. You should see this right here. We cool so far? All right. Next thing. Ah, so I have an SQL file. Uh, you can download that if you want. Uh, I think the best way to do it is just put it in your browser. Um, just grab this URL right here. And go to your browser. Bring up another tab. Just paste it in here. And there, that's the SQL file. So just save that. Just save it as whatever. Just make sure you can go find it. Okay. Save it somewhere on your local, on your computer there. So I'm done with that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go into import. Click import on, in an adminner. Uh, and then I have to make sure that these are all set correctly. You want to choose the file. Go find it. Put mine in my downloads directory. Uh, I should list it via date modified. Date. There it is. Okay, open that. And then we're going to execute it. And then you should see the seven queries executed. So if you click on accelerometer data, this is what you should see in regards to the structure. So I'll wait a couple minutes. Now I would have you make this, but it's actually pretty hard to get this working right, <laughs> right here. And the, if you notice, uh, this current timestamp three, this actually will store mil time in milliseconds for you. But try as I might to actually create that as a default parameter using adminner, I couldn't get it to work. But I was able to get it to work as, an S as a .sql file and import it. We good so far? Stop me if I'm going too fast. All right, so you go. We go out to the slide deck here, and yes, that's what I just showed you. Um, what is this? So we have the laser pointer. Laser. All right, so we have 
our ID, that's, this is our primary key, auto increment. Um, we have this date time that's going to store the current timestamp, but it's going to give you uh, three decimal places, so, it'll, so it's going to store uh, time in milliseconds for us. Okay? And then I've got a floating point value for the X data, the Y data, and the Z data. Okay? X axes, Y axes, and Z axes data. All right. Okay. Well, I have created a C program for you to log 60 seconds of accelerometer data every 100 milliseconds, which, which translates into 600 rows of data max. Okay? Once we get to 600 rows, we're going to delete the oldest data. So, um, first thing we're going to do is install a C++ MySQL connector on the Pi. Because this program is written in C, we need to have a connector that communicates with MySQL. We already have one built in to, that we installed to Apache for PHP. Now we're going to install one that works with, with, C, uh, with C and C++. They have Python connectors, so a ton of them. Okay? So you can write Python code that connects to your MySQL database, Java, whatever. All right, so in order to do that, uh, let's see. So this is going to install the C++ libraries for using MySQL. The header files will be installed in user include MySQL. So type the following in the SSH terminal window. Um, and then we're going to install the I squared C tools so we can communicate over the I squared C bus to the accelerometer. Okay, so grab this big long thing so we can install the lib client here. Press enter. It's going to install a bunch of stuff. What did I say here? We will install a few packages throughout this tutorial using the app package manager that comes standard on most every Ubuntu Debian style of Unix. Yay. Okay. So then uh, we, we need to be able to make sure we can communicate with the I squared C bus. So copy and paste that line, sudo app get install minus Y, which says automatically answer yes for the I squared, I squared C dash tools library. And that's a Python library, believe it or not. So we're working with a lot of coding languages here. Could have I done this whole thing in PHP? Sure, I could have. All right. So that's installed. All right. First thing, or the next thing I want you to do is go in. You're in your home directory right now. Okay, we have a downloads folder. Make another directory under your home directory called accelerometer. So just type M-K-G-I-R-A-C-C-E-L-E-R-O-M-E-T-E-R. -E -E so accelerometer and then CD into accelerometer because we're going we're gonna to download some source code into here. Okay, next I want you to go ahead and using wget, I want you to download this 
log accelerometer data dot cpp file to your accelerometer folder. So if you just grab this right here, this wget, and paste that in there, you should have this log accelerometer data dot cpp. cpp stands for C++. So let me bring that up so I can show you what this piece of code does. Okay. Um, okay. So in C++, actually, if you're familiar with Java, don't you have like include files in Java? Huh? Okay. So Java was, re was created as a replacement language for C++. So some of these things should be somewhat familiar to you, okay? So there's a main right down here. Just like in Java, there's a main function, okay? So the operating system is going to, when you invoke this as an executable, okay? So we have to, cr we have to run a C++ compiler to compile it. It's going to create a .out or a .o file or whatever. We can name it whatever we want and it will be executable. And when we type it on the command line, the operating system is going to look for the main function just like in Java. So what's going on here? So I've got an in integer, and I'm creating a variable called a file descriptor because in Unix, everything is a file. So our accelerometer is out in the um, device directory. Okay. And we're going to communicate it to it. Here it is, dev i squared c dash 1. So the i squared c bus is accessed through the file descriptor of dev i squared c dash 1. Okay? All right, so that's the bus. And we have to use these fancy IO control functions to actually send data to it and get data back from it. So we're going to set our file descriptor to this open call where we're going to pass in this. This is just a character string is all this is. Okay, we're going to pass in this descriptor right here. And we're saying we want to be able to read. We want to open this I squared C bus for reading and writing. That's all this line does. If we get a number less than zero in typical Unix fashion, errors are returned as less than zero, you know, minus one, minus two, whatever. We'll say fail to open the bus and we'll exit. Okay. Otherwise, uh, I don't think this, I've got, I'm generating a random number and I don't think that's used for anything, but I need to initialize my MySQL database. Okay. So I have to make this call right here, initializing. Uh, uh, initializing the MySQL database. Okay, so I create this right up here, and I think this at MySQL is right up here. Okay, here it is right here. I've got a pound defined for it. That's my connection. Okay, let's go back down over here. So I have a connection right here. So I have to connect to my database. These are my credentials right here. So you'll see host, user, password, database, and then these are just filler. Uh, parameters right here. And if you look right over here, I set my host to localhost. I set my user to accelerometer. I set the password to accelerometer and the database to accelerometer data. Remember, we've got all those things, right? Nothing out of the ordinary yet. Okay. So uh, I'm going to make sure that my connection is valid. Remember those or die statements? Well, this is how you do it in C++. Okay. So I got to check to see, is it valid? If it's not valid, I'm going to output an error saying we got a problem, and then I'm going to exit, return one. This is a forever loop because I want to log this data all the time, right? Okay. This is going to run as a Unix service. Uh, I don't know if we're actually going to, yes, we will install this as a Unix service today. Okay. So 
we can create any program that we want in any programming language. And as long as it's an executable file, we can tell our Pi when it starts up to run this thing. Okay? And that's called creating a Unix service. So we're essentially creating a little server that's logging data from our accelerometer. All right? Okay. So here's my select statement. Look at that. Okay, so I'm going to select the number of data items from the accelerometer data database right here. Then I'm going to send that in as a query. And then I'm going to go grab the result set, the result. Now the result is, it's an ASCII value, so I need to convert it to an integer. I want to get the number of rows, because remember what I said, that if I have greater than or equal to 600 rows, I need to delete the oldest stuff. Okay, so that's what this if statement does right here. If number of rows is greater than or equal to 600, uh, I've got the oldest entry, so I need to look for the oldest entry. So select ID from accelerometer, data, order by, created, in ascending, order, limit one. Great, I got it, I get the item, uh, making sure that the, that the query state is good. Uh, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and fetch the result of that. And that's going to be an item location, element location zero. No associative arrays in C++. Well, there is if we use the right libraries. And then I'm going to take that ID. This is the ID to delete. Remember, I'm getting the ID. And I'm, now I'm going to go and create another query saying delete from accelerometer data where data ID equals. Okay, uh, plus ID to delete. Okay, so we do we go ahead and do that. And then this was something that I had to learn the hard way. I forgot that C++, you have to manage your own memory. And when you're doing the MySQL stuff, it creates a resource and you need to delete it or you blow up the heap. After 20 minutes of this thing running, my Pi kept crashing. So I finally figured out what was going on. All right, that deletes the oldest record, okay? Now, um, so that's checking, do I have any old records? Now what I want to do is create three floating point values for the X, Y, and Z values. I created a function up top that basically goes ahead and passes these in by reference and gets the results. Get accelerometer data is a function that I wrote that goes ahead and qu queries the accelerometer and grabs the X, Y, and Z G for in, in G, okay, in G force. So I get that, and then I'm going to create this um, SQL statement: insert into accelerometer data axis X, Y, and Z values. Here they are, okay. And then we go ahead and put that in there, and look. I sleep for 100 milliseconds. And then I do this whole thing over again every tenth of a second. Okay? Is there a little overhead? Is it exactly tenth of a second? No, but it's close. Okay? Close enough. And I have a return statement which I'll never hit, and I'll cl uh, close database statement which I'll never hit because I'm running in an endless loop right here. Let's take a quick look at the get accelerometer function that I wrote up here. Okay, so <clears throat> oftentimes, if you want to get a piece of hardware like this and plug it in, somebody wrote a function that you don't have to worry about this. You just use it. But they usually give you the code. Okay, so I went on SparkFun. You can go to Adafruit. You can go anywhere for based on the data sheet. I actually read the data sheet on this and just so you know my background I used to be an embedded developer so I had to read these things for a living and do what's called bit twiddling okay to go get data out of pieces of hardware you don't have to do that this is done for you but if you want to go ahead and read the data sheet on these things and figure this out usually somebody figures it out for you this is how I'm communicating with this accelerometer um, okay so first thing I need to do is get the I squared C device. This happens to be the actual part number of the accelerometer. Okay, so I looked up the data sheet on that. 
and I'm going to go ahead and write into this to alpha register. Uh, what am I right? Select mode register 2A and put it in standby mode. Okay, so I've got to select the 2A register and put it in standby mode. And I'm going to write the, this config. This is an array, a two character array. And I write that out by, by writing out to here. And then the next thing I have to do is I'll select it again and I'll activate it. So I'm going to put it in active mode, write that out. Then I'm going to select the configuration register. Now, this is the interesting thing. You can set the range of, set of sensitivity on these accelerometers. So I wanted a range of plus or minus 2 Gs. You can set a range of 4 G. You can set a range of less. Keep in mind, depending upon the resolution that you want, it may take longer to get that information and talk to it. But these things are typically highly configurable. All right. So we write that out, and then the, the data sheet says sleep for five, actually it says sleep for about a couple of microseconds, but it was wrong because <laughs> I did some testing. I said, well, if I sleep for five milliseconds and then go and, and then I can go ahead and read the accelerometer data, I have to read seven bytes. So I created a, this, red, uh, this data reg array right here, this data array with seven bytes. So I'm going ahead and reading that. And then I have to do all this bit shifting magic that you probably don't care about, okay? To go ahead and convert the data that I got out of the accelerometer into readable G-force. And there's, that was part of the data sheet. This is how you do it. You shift all the bits this way and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this C is really good for doing this, okay? That's why I wrote this program in C. Could have I done it in in PHP, sure, but I don't know if it would have been as accurate, okay? All right, so then I'm going ahead and doing some more bit shifting, and now I had to do some little, I had some debug output to say, hey, is this the right G-force, blah, 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 whatever, and here it is, and then these were the values that get sent in. If you look at the, B, at, at the input parameters, this says pass this in by reference, okay? That's what this at sign means. So the code is somewhat readable, even though it's doing some bit shifting and bit twiddling, right? But I wrote this function for you. All you need to know is I call it right down, where did I call it? Right here, <laughs> okay? Just created a function to call it and get it and we're good. And it takes a, a little over five milliseconds to get the data from the, from the chip. We cool? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's the C program. What I want you to do is compile it. <laughs> so rather than type this whole thing, grab this right here. Okay, we're in your accelerometer data. And paste that in. Okay, so what's going on here? This is the G++ compiler. You know how you type Java C on the command line? to compile a Java program, type G++ to compile a C++ program. This is a switch that we have to set right here saying which version of the C++ library we're using. And this is gonna be the output file right here, log accelerometer data, okay? And then our input file is log accelerometer data.cpp. And I have to specify that I'm using that MySQL client connector library, okay? So if I press enter, we're actually compiling code on the Pi right now. Takes a little bit. And then because your instructor is too lazy to write proper ISO C++ string conversion, you're going to get this warning. Okay? I don't care. It works. Okay. So if you type ls minus al, you will see... I have, actually, if I just type ls, that eh, doesn't matter. Okay, you will see that it, it compiled this log accelerometer data and it made it executable. So in order to run it, I have to type dot forward slash log accelerometer data, press enter, you should see nothing here. Okay, however, if you bring up your browser 
and you press select, you will see that I'm logging accelerometer data here. And it looks like the Z axis right now, the way I have it oriented, is I'm, I've got it oriented. And you may have like a, a little key on yours, the, the, the smaller ones do, which is X, Y, and Z up. So this is close to one, so that's which is Earth gravity of one. Okay, so if I turn this thing, and you can see it's, uh, if I do select again right here, you'll see, hey, look, I've got that many. After a minute goes by, you're going to see these ones get deleted. Okay? How did you get it to running if you went to your terminal? If I go back to my terminal, I typed in dot forward slash log accelerometer data, not the dot CPP. Okay, so if I select again, who's got that running? Good. Okay, see how it's deleting the oldest stuff? Oops. Okay, now I'm going to turn my accelerometer to the side here, and then one of these other things, if you go look at the bottom, is going to be one, which it looks like it is axes Y. <laughs> Okay, so you know your accelerometer is working if you can turn the orientation of it. So now I'm going to turn it this way and do a select and look at the last bit of data I got down here over at 12. And it looks like the x-axis now is in Earth up. Okay, that's how you know it's working. What do you think? It is pretty cool, isn't it? Now, you know, we're coders. We could go home now, right? Because we got the data, but we probably want to make this useful <laughs> to somebody. Okay? All right. To stop it, go back to your terminal window and type Control C. And uh, you will find that you're not writing data to your database anymore. Oops. Okay. However, it's kind of inconvenient to have to like go into this directory and start this thing up every time. So what we really want to do is create and install a Unix service. Okay. So I wrote down here in order to avoid the pain of having to manually start up the log accelerometer data program every time we want to use it, we will create a Unix service that will load the program every time the system boots and unloads it when the system shuts down. Okay, uh, I got this from a link. I don't know if I have it in the notes here. Um, did I? Yep, yeah, it's right here. There it is. So I got this from this link right here. Uh, how to auto run a Python script on boot. Now this will work for any executable. Okay, so here are the instructions. You want to go ahead and in the same folder, in, the Excel, uh, in your terminal window, you're going to be in the accelerometer folder you already are at, download this accelerometer data logging dot service file. Okay, and let's go ahead and download that. Just use wget to do that. Go back to your terminal window, paste that in, enter. Now you have a service file. Now I'm going to, I want to show you this service file. It's pretty simple. Okay, so we're going to move this, we're going to copy this file up to the libsystemd.system folder, which gets read on boot. Every time a Unix, and this is true for any Unix system, okay? So what does this thing do? Basically what we're doing here is we've got these uh, three sections, unit, service, and install, okay? 
So under unit, you have to give your service a description. So I called it accelerometer data logging service. Make sense? And then you have to say, when should this thing get started up? When should it be started up? And in Unix speak, multi-user.target means after networking is running. OK? Why? It's because we want people to get access through a web service eventually to this. OK? And then under the service section, you have to state where where the service executable file is located. It's going to be in the root folder. We haven't pushed it up there yet, but we're going to copy it up there. And then if it produces standard output, do you want to output that to the screen or do you want or do you not want to? So if you say standard standard output equals null, like if the program outputs something, you might want to say where standard output is. Typically, you say null. Okay? You, or you write it to a log file. And then um, you have an install section saying wanted by multi-user target. And then this is the alias of starting up the, the service. So the, we're naming the service accelerometer data logging dot service. OK? All right. So first thing you need to do is copy this up to libsystemd.system. So just copy sudo. Copy this line right here, sudo cp accelerometer data logging dot service up to lib system d system. Enter in if you have to enter in your password. You can do that. So that got copied up there. Okay. Then the next thing we've got to do is. Oh, I got to explain to you how you start a service. How do you enable it, disable it, start and stop? Okay, so install. Uh, here are the commands to enable, disable, start, and stop the service. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is type sudo system control enable accelerometer data logging dot service. This will create a symbolic link for system D to go ahead and actually run this. <coughs> If you want to disable the service, then you say uh, sudo system control disable, the name of the service. That will remove the symbolic link. To start the service, you just say system control start. To stop it, you say stop. Once you've enabled it, and um, then the next time you reboot it, it will automatically start when networking becomes available. It will automatically disable it. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, stop it, not disable it. Stop it when networking goes away when you shut the system down. OK? We good so far? All right. So copy up, type sudo cp log underscore accelerometer underscore data over up to the root directory. OK? And then you need to Type these two commands, sudo system control enable accelerometer data logging dot service and sudo system control start accelerometer data logging service. Okay, so and you should get this created sim link. You're all good there. And then we're going to go start it. Okay, and if it if it's running, how do we know? You should see new data being produced in the database. So it's running. That's it. Okay. What we're gonna do next week, well, we'll see if we get through this next week. We might take a break from it next week. Just bring it anyways, because Nate Finch is going to uh, talk. He's going to show you how to use um, a uh, twig template. Think, show you how to do P, uh, use the twig templating engine in the PHP. Okay. Uh, so anybody need any help with this? or?
And this is this is good for any Unix distribution. It's not just for a Raspberry Pi. So hopefully you learned something about how, how you can create Unix services out of any executable file. Very cool, right? Okay. Any questions for me? For the stack, it you could so to, so basically what's going to happen is every time the thing boots up, it's going to run. Run. Okay. Okay. If you don't have it connected. You're going to get an error, and it's not going to run. Okay. Okay. If you don't have the accelerometer connected, so what I would recommend doing once you shut the thing down is just leave it connected and put that little <laughs> that little uh, anti-static bag over the accelerometer thing, or just pop it in your your thing. Okay. Are you are you working on configuring our first? Uh, how's it going? Sometimes it works, it doesn't always work. So I'm, if I need to check your project off, don't leave. Yes, make sure, by the way, that you shut down, remember, shut down minus H now. 99% 90, 90 of the time people are plugged in the work. Shut down space minus H, space now. Okay? 
So let me, let me, I'm going to do that for mine. And then I'll come around and check stuff off. Mm. And Nate, I checked your project off. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. And pseudo shutdown minus H now. Stop 